tells you which way it's going to start rotating. And now we're going to look at how to describe the rotation itself. When we were studying circular motion, we do radius and speed, but that's not a good way because you can have two balls on the same rod rotating together. Now if we are rotating together, well, this ball has bigger speed or this one. Well, we want the bigger or V2? Yeah, V2 will be bigger because we are rotating. Uh, so, the far end will move a longer distance in a given time when the whole ride is rotating together. But they are rotating together. There should be a single number to describe the rotation, not just speed, because like, even though they are rotating together, the speed is different. So a better way to describe the rotation is by this angle theta. Rotation is that this angle is changing. You go from here to, let's say this is the angle at T, or maybe E plus ERT. And earlier, the rod is at here. So the angle is changing. So just like we define x plus b as the change of x position divided by the change of time, it is how fast the x position is changing. We define something called angular velocity. This is omega. Omega is a fifth vector. And angular velocity is defined as the change of angle divided by the change of time. Okay? I hope you are familiar with this notation now. Now you learn x velocity, y velocity, and now it's angular velocity. It's the same thing, but the change of angle. So, what is the dimension of omega? Does angle has dimension? No. Yeah, so it's just one over time. Compared to velocity, it has it is it is a it is missing a dimension of length here because position actually has a dimension of length. Position is like meter. But angle is like, it's just an angle. You need to specify if you are using 300 degree or 2 pi radian, but it has no dimension. Okay? So just like we define x acceleration as how fast the x velocity is changing, We define angular acceleration, alpha. Alpha is another Greek vector to be the change of angular velocity divided by the change of time. If the rod is rotating with a constant angular velocity, then there's no angular acceleration. Under constant under the same angular velocity, the ball will have different speed, but the angular velocity is the same. If the system is rotating faster and faster, then it has increasing angular velocity, and it has a angular acceleration. This is angular acceleration. Dimension of alpha. One over time squared. Good, good job. 
up with this. Yeah. All right. So this angular velocity is related to the speed of the ball. When you look at R1, and this is how much the angle has changed, if you want to convert the angle into the distance that it travels, you do the radius. The distance that it travels is going to be r times its change of theta. So the speed of the first particle will be the distance that it travels divided by the change of time. Okay? And according to the thing you know, you learn what will be this change of angle divided by change of time? Good, so you can say V equals R omega. The speed of a rotating object equals to the distance or the length of the labor arm times the angular velocity. Similarly, what's the relation between, so when the rotation of this rod is accelerating, the ball will have a tangent acceleration. It is not the same acceleration that you learn for constant speed circular motion. For constant speed circular motion, it's going to be V squared over R pointing toward the center. But now, if the ball has an angular acceleration when it is rotating faster and faster, the acceleration will not point toward the center but have a component tension to the circle. So the direction of acceleration becomes like this. Now, if speed is r times omega, what will this tension acceleration be? in the terms of the new variable you learned today. If speed is r omega, what will a t be? It will be r something? Yeah, it will be r alpha. And you can check the dimensions correct. Angular velocity is velocity missing a length. So you give it a length and you get speed. Acceleration is acceleration but without the length dimension not in the numerator. So you give it a length and you get acceleration. But this is not the acceleration of the ball. It is just the tangent component of it. When the ball is not having angular acceleration, when it is rotating with constant angular velocity, the ball still have acceleration pointing toward the center, like the circular motion you learned. Any question? Okay, so we learned that torque affects rotation, and to describe rotation, we use angular velocity and angular acceleration. Let's see how exactly does torque affect these two. To do that, we look at a simple example. Let's say there's only a particle on a massless rod, so you only need to care about the motion of this particle. The force, let's say it is always perpendicular to the lever arm, so the torque caused by this force will be what? If the left arm is R, force is F, it is perpendicular, how big is the torque? R F sine 90. Good, and sine 90 is what? So what? when the force is perpendicular to the left arm, you just multiply it, get torque. When it is not perpendicular, then you do the sine trick. Now, this force 
is going to cause acceleration because f equals m a. But the acceleration is going to be the tangent y or d squared over r. Which direction will that force the accelerated? Tangent or center? Tangent. Tangent, good. So you know it should f it should be f equals m a, but the tangent acceleration. So if you multiply both sides by r, you get torque equals m r a t. The tangent acceleration will be radius times alpha. So you have m r times r alpha. This is torque. And this is m r with another r. So m r squared alpha. So we see that torque will cause angular acceleration, just like force causes acceleration. And the ratio between torque and alpha is, is not mass. It is something that has mass and distance squared. And we call that moment of inertia. And for a single particle, the moment of inertia is easy. It's just the mass times the distance to the kb squared. OK? So to rotate something, the distance is important. When I apply the same torque, it is harder to rotate it this way because the mass is far away from the pivot. If r is bigger, the moment of inertia will be bigger, even though the mass of the rod is not changing. I can rotate it from the center. Then all the mass will be closer to the rotational center, and the moment of inertia is smaller. It is easy to rotate because i is small. It is hard to rotate because the moment of inertia is bigger, even though the mass is not changing. Distance matters. That's the difference between rotation and linear motion. For f equals ma, it's just the mass. But for torque equals i alpha, the moment of inertia involves both the mass and distance squared. OK? So that is moment of inertia.